countrymen, I accept this challenge given to me legitimately through a democratic process of election by all of you. I promise to rebuild a nation that has been grossly plundered by past administrations. Since it comes, we have had to grapple with those evil vices like corruption, nepotism, tribalism, and inordinate ambitions in our polity. We must change the things which consistently underdevelop our country. We must change our psyche. Now is the time for us to combine our efforts as a nation. To achieve this noble objective, we have to rise above our differences, to wipe out fraud, bribery, inflation of contracts, vandalization of power lines, and those who are willing collaborators by virtue of their positions in government. Lastly, it is good to be ambitious, but inordinate ambition breeds corruption, treachery, and unpatriotic tendencies in us. Rather, our ambition should be to move our country forward. Merit should come first. Mediocrity must be a practice of the past. Let us all strive to be the best in all what we do. From henceforth, employments and contracts are on the basis of merit and not on the basis of who knows who or Godfatherism. We will now be Nigerians first before our tribe if we all can abide by these new ideologies and philosophies. I, as the new elected president, promise to take this nation to great prosperity that will be the envy of other nations. Thank you very much and God bless our country. Electioneering period. I am the guest of honor, a special guest of honor this day. I am being honored this day by very honorable man. Therefore, it will not be out of place if I say I owe these honorable men a lot for being behind me. This party, this dinner party, has brought all of us together after a very tough battle. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, please, let us all enjoy ourselves. President, you, uh, you approach this august gathering with security personnel. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, excuse us. Personnel. It's okay. I'm quite safe with them. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Oh. <sighs> now we feel a bit more relaxed. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am happy to be in your presence this day. I'm really honored. I'm 
must say I feel very proud. You all supported me to win the elections. I owe my success to you all. My success is our success. You see, you spent your money and used your connections to see me elected. I must say that I assure you that your investment in me will be rewarded with profits and imagine it. The wealth of this country is yours for the asking. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, sir, um, congratulations. You have just made a very short but inspiring and reassuring speech. We were particularly delighted by that aspect of it that says that uh, the wealth of this country is ours for the asking, yes. Uh, Mr. President, sir, if we say we did not expect that statement from you, then we would have been consciously disappointing our own expectations because having spent so much to put you in office, it was only proper that we expect some little return. Yeah, <laughs> that is how it should be. <laughs> and uh, we know that to whom much is given, of course more is expected. And um, we are not in doubt whatsoever that uh, our investment in you is not a waste. Um, Gentlemen, yes. shall we toast to the success of the administration of this president? Yes. Come on. Uh, Mr. President, uh, please sit down. Um, well, you used to be a very good singer. Now lead us. I sang this one. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. And so say all of us. Ha ha! So say all of us. Hey, hey! He's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Ask him a few questions related to his family. Uh, doctor, he's very far from us now. Yes, very far. It's alright, we can do that by phone. Uh, doctor, he. I. Okay, it's alright, it's alright. I'm sorry. It's just that I needed his family medical history. Of course, that's all. Have you ever met her before? No. Why? Why, madam? She has not been infected with poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis? Yes, poliomyelitis. Mm. Poliomyelitis is a deadly virus. And all children will have to be immunized. 
You see, even the World Health Organization has come here that they brought this thing free of charge to immunize children, to eradicate this thing out of Africa. Anyway, your daughter will need all the assistance she can get. We have to buy her a wheelchair. A wheelchair? Yes, a wheelchair. Her both legs cannot carry her. Watch her die too. Doctor, I can't afford that kind of money. The salary is just 5,000 naira. Well, I prefer recommending wheelchair as mobility aid for this kind of attack. Especially a young girl like her. Crutches will put more strain on her shoulder and upper region. Her breast too. So wheelchair is it. They can't just be king for back, you go spoil her food. Yes, mom, I will soon buy me a wheelchair. Wheelchair? Sister, now we think Dr. Otoku, he saying uh, polio make her leg paralyzed. So I know he immunize her when I born her. I got tired for this kind of thing because I go buy a wheelchair. Why well, I want to see money by wheelchair now? Sinti, you know see you still belong to me. And I saw you still beautiful. You know what I mean now? What do you call me now? You still the man. Ah, I beg, I beg, Choma, Choma. I don't just bring my matter for this case. Christ, I get enough problem. You they talk, man. Don't be man who put me for this one, co this condition. I don't need man. I don't need that today. I don't need that tomorrow. You see, the five thousand already reports for office. I will receive, but I will figure money by and go check. I will tell you that. With time, I hope say things will change for my life. Amen, amen. You go to pray, me I will be pray. Things will be better now. When I tell me fetch what I might take me. I understand. Yeah, I, I do understand. No, yes, I understand. Please bear with us. You see, in fact, there has not been any problem actually. In the next seven days, that oil will be there. In the next seven days, we are sorry for the delay. No, no, no problem. Okay. It, oh, for heaven's sake, I promise you. Please don't be annoyed. We shall be there. Sure, we shall be. Thank you. Who is the, that is the chairman of our Spanish oil company. Yeah, so what was he talking about? Now, the same crude oil they ordered for and paid for, which we promised would be delivered two weeks ago, did not get there. What? Why? I don't know. And do you know that? Even as at last night, that vessel has not been loaded. It has not been loaded. Well, but this, this is irresponsible. Eh? The delivery is two weeks behind schedule. Right? I mean, supposing they decide that they don't want it anymore, that would refund their money. $500 million. Look, who is in charge of this delivery? Who is that? Who is in charge? Uh, Find out from Chief. Rotimi Adeoye, my nephew, whom I put in charge, and he has been performing. 
But you know, the boy says that the managing director of NMPC is not cooperating, that he's trying to find some cola to give the man. Chief, you know? Gentlemen, bear with me. I gave this company my word of honor. I promised them that there are one million barrels of crude oil will be in Spain two weeks ago, and this oil has not been. It must be delivered. Please, okay. excuse me. Go over to me. And you now you are explaining to me, telling me that one silly, stupid director of the NBC wants cola. Please, somebody should explain this. To me. Somebody explain what's going on. We are yes. wasting we our time. Out. Listen, recall that boy, kick him out, and replace him. Yeah. I mean, what is this? It's not a matter of sucking. Let us find out what is responsible for the. Uh, uh, Roti me. Roti me. This is Shotumba. Now, Bombini saying, Come here. Come to the head office right away. This matter of sacking, sacking, sacking. Why don't we find out what the problem is? Must it be sack always? Shotumba. Uh -huh. Let us face reality. You are causing, or your nephew has become very incompetent. Right? And this is what money does to a human being. He has done a seed money, now he can't perform anymore. We have delivered oil late before. Listen, I don't know what is happening. The boy will not be responsible for all the problems that is happening there. Do you know what happens at the, at, at, at the place? We stand to no, you can pay for I don't know. million dollars with the boy. Look, I don't know why you want to victimize this boy. Why don't you, why don't you replace him with Bernard Okoye? Bernard is competent, Bernard is strict. That's what I'm saying. And what he's got strict? public relations. That's what what public relations that the boy has been doing his job. I think this is tribalism. Again, in this kind of small business, tribalism is going to crop up. Why do you want to remove my cousin because it's Adeoye? And you want to put Okoye? No, no. You remove Adeoye to put Okoye? Listen, don't bring sentiment into this thing. What is sentiment? I don't, I, I don't agree with this kind of amendment. I am... No, I like it. This is not right. You say we have 500 million Americans dollars at stake and we must get the correct person to do this job. How are you sure that Bernard will get out to take a deal with this job? Is that Bernard? Is that Bernard? You people continue. Bernard, come over to my office. Come over to my office in the please. Please come over, right? Yes. People must find out what is responsible for the delay. And you pick up one, uh, one boy and fire him just because like that. Because uh, it's not your own from your own place. You are going to take over from Rotimi Adeoye, right? So go and look for him. Let him formally and properly hand over his job to you. And you can hand over your own job to him. Now, please, wait. What is our percentage shareholdings in Clarion Bank? 75%, sir. 75%. All right. Um, we shall no more buy shares in the bank for now. We're going to concentrate on communications. Um, we want to ensure that before this year runs out, we shall be commanding 51% shares in all the GSM companies in the country. So go back now, make all the arrangements, include special duties in your portfolio. Take over from my duty now. Go on, hurry. Uh -huh. Gentlemen, I must let you know that I'm not happy about all this happening. But who is happy about no, losing 500 million dollars? Who what what about, about the, 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 the millions that he has been making for for how long? He has, for as long as he has been there, you people just turn around and uh, want to victimize the boy. I don't think I will agree with this one. We must know this boy is competent. He is clever. He is more sure. competent than this boy. No, but as I they say, mind. majority carry the vote. Carry on.
morning sir. I'm very sorry sir. No need to be sorry. Look Cynthia, we are running this company with very high overhead. Lepa is not regular, so we have to use our generator for almost 22 hours of every day. We buy diesel, engine oil, pay staff. We also fuel the company's vehicles. In fact, it is difficult to run this company under these circumstances. Sir, I can't... How do you hold it? We want to reduce our cost of salary. Sir. Take this. You can go to the accounts department for your severance pay. We cannot afford to keep you here any longer. Especially when you are not punctual at work. Sir, please. I know all this. You have to listen to me. Sir, I am a single parent. I have a crippled daughter. I have to buy her a wheelchair and take care of her school. If you sack me, how will I go? Please, I beg you in the name of God. Sir, don't do this to me, please. Young girl, I have finished with you. Yes, sir, See please. the cashier and let her pay you off. Do not send me out like this, please, sir.
Okay, wait. Let me go and prepare your food now, eh? Why don't you drink Gary before I finish cooking? I don't want Gary. I drank Gary before. Wait. No kerosene, eh? What kind of problem is this? Ha. Nepa! Mommy, Nepa is taking the I'm coming. The Let me light the uh, lantern. Mm. Is this match now, eh? It's on the fridge. On the fridge? Don't worry, I'll go to Mama Susie's place and get your resume, okay? I'm sure she will have some. Don't worry. I'll be back now. Okay? I'll go pay you tomorrow. I might just rush go for Tochi. Tomorrow? Eh? tomorrow? Oh, my Tochi. I'm not feeling so long credit. I'm out of this kerosene. Three days and I'll stay for house. I'm not feeling so long credit. Sam, Sam. Mama Susie, I beg. I don't owe you like this before. But go no level for me, eh? Just pity me. I might go cook for Tochi. They cry since morning. Not my fault. Tochi the hungry since morning. I just go cook for her. Okay. What touch na because na you? I know the self credit. You know, no. Since three days now, they for you because of this curious. You know this man market. You know people just every day. Your heart from the depths of 
the stars Oh, 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 oh. Touch, touch me Feel it coming to you From your heart, from your soul 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 Jesus Christ! Are you okay? Is she your sister? Uh, no. My daughter. Daughter? Yes. Oh, I see. Oh, you mind if I drop you off? I uh, know, I'll just pick a bike here. Oh, come on. My house is not far from home. Don't worry, I'll drop you. Whenever, wherever you're going, I'll drop you, okay? Mr. you don't need to bother. Don't yourself. worry, the pleasure is mine, okay? Yourself. Oh, sorry. Cynthia. My name is Cynthia. So, what happened to your daughter? How did she become? Polio. Polio mellitus. I didn't immunize her early enough, so she caught the virus. Jesus Christ. It must be very tough for you. Well, getting used to it. Um, I'm going towards Mushi. So, you heard that? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. When you rich people wear this kind. Well, anything for the kids. Um, so, look into the pigeon hole for my card, okay? Okay. Here, my card. Thank you very much. My number is there. Call me anytime. Very good. You've done enough already. Right. your daughter okay thank you very much sir. But you, 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 oh come on i insist you take it just peanut okay
gentlemen. Mr. President. Your Excellency, I, uh, I applied to be awarded the contract for the reconstruction of all the federal roads in my part of the country. I don't know that you have had time to look into it. Have you reacted to it? The contract has been awarded. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. <laughs> it's been awarded to Fantonini Construction Company. Right. To who? Fantonini Construction Company. But, Your, Your Excellency, for how long can this country continue like this? It's, it would be a good idea if, if we patronize indigenous construction companies and not let them die away. How can we continue to patronize foreign construction companies? But Fantonini has a reputation for doing good jobs. But my company also has some competence along that line. Oh, come on, gentlemen. You were awarded a lot of juicy contracts in the past with millions and billions of naira. Most of these contracts were abandoned by you people. And you know it. Okay, Mr. President. Well, Your Excellency, I will not argue with you. But, but as the old adage goes, circumstances alter cases. Yes, yes. But nevertheless, in the meantime, what about the oil wells in the Delta area? Don't you think you should give some of them to us? Let's let's do the exploration since we have lost out on the roads. The oil wells are reserved by the government, and they are not to be tampered with reserved for the for next who? thirty years. Who are you reserving them for? It is for a special project in a case of emergency. Emergency. Yes. But we are in an emergency economic situation. Myself and the chief, why do you, don't you help us? You know, we spent so much money for your election. We were expecting that if you got into office, at least you will arrange for us to uh, be a little bit comfortable. We spent a lot. Gentlemen, you're asking for very sensitive things. Economically sensitive to our country. We need your help. We spent money on you to win the election. Now you are on the seat and you are abandoning us. Gentlemen, listen. I was elected president to ease the poverty and the hard time this country is going through. We cannot continue to subject the lives of innocent citizens to misery because of few greedy people. Oh, come on. Mr. President, you mean myself and the chief are part of those greedy people? We are friends, myself and the chief. Chief? So we are the greedy people. Um, Mr. President, you you promised us um, that uh, it will put you in our face that whatever we wanted you would do, in short, that our wishes would constitute your command. 
but from all indications, we seem to be falling fast out of favor. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder what is wrong. You just said that a few greedy people are ruining the country, and by inference, the people you're talking about. But it's all right. Um, Excellent, sir. We, your greedy friends, must leave. Nothing there for news today. Which one you did? This one not be news. Five minutes now, sat. Wait. Now today we begin here. Say they sat five ministers. Ah, it was sat ministers. Five. See, if you check well, well, eh? Among all the ministers we sat, if it be these people, those who know they work, the people who know they work. Uh -huh. they, you don't ask yourself who they go carry replace these five when they sat. My brother. The truth be say, I don't believe say this government get anything good to offer us. us. You see, I'm not the thing where you make you people. So I tell I go take mouth to bring bad things for one. Hey, you don't say you know it's best thing, but that thing will come from this government. My brother, I'm an opinion with that. Are you happy with this? Okay, today we begin this. No year. problem, bye bye. Okay. Well, it's um, I intend to. Travel to the Caribbean for two weeks. Get down to America. We um, have our international club meeting. Ah. Ah. Chief, what you go. All the ministers have been dropped. Five seven ministers have been sacked. Look at that. Look at that. What is this? What is this man? Hello? Hello, who are speaking with? Is that that your protocol? I want to speak with Mr. President. Oh, sorry, the President is in the meeting. Listen, this is urgent. And I hope you know who is speaking. I said I want to speak with Mr. President. 
told you that the president is in a meeting. Why is it that each time I want to speak with the president, you tell me that he is very busy? Do you know who is speaking to you? Do you? Alright, don't blame me if I make you take responsibility should things go wrong. I'm very, very sorry, sir. The president is in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't understand this. I just can't understand this. I mean, when you were recommending this man, you said he would do everything we want him to do. Now, this is it. He's turning down everything we are giving up to him. Just what is this? What is this, Chief? Chief, 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 I want you to calm down. Chief, calm down. You understand? I think um, the two of you to try and see this man tomorrow. I have an appointment with my doctor. The two of you should try and see him. You understand what I'm saying? So, see him and talk to him. Let's know what we have done wrong to this, this man. Have we done wrong to bring out a man from the gutter and install him as a president? I, mean, I can't understand this. And what have we done wrong in this case now? Please oh. This place is good. Besides, we've been staying here for a long time now. Sure. But a princess like you deserves a better place. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, arrangement has been concluded for you to work in one of my friends' companies. It's a lie. <laughs> oh, Stevie, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate honestly. Anytime. Thank you. Good. It's thank my you. pleasure, okay? Thank you. Um, I think I have to start going now. So, so I'll see you next week when I come back from London. Okay? Now, tell me, what do I get for you and Tochi on my trip? Stephen, you've done more than enough for me and Tochi, so I wish you a safe trip, that's all. Oh, my Cynthia, tell me, anything. Nothing. You've done more than enough. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just take good care of yourself, okay? You too. And don't forget to take care of Tuchi for me. I will. Okay. Have a safe trip. I'll see you, okay? Nice. Bye bye. Bye. Your Excellency, the last time we were here, we talked about the award of contracts for road reconstruction. You denied us that. And then we offered to be allowed to explore some oil wells that are unexplored in the Niger Delta. Again, you dismissed that request with a wave of the hand. Then we came up with five names, nominees for ministerial positions. You have again turned down those names. Uh, Your Excellency, this is not in consonance with the accord we reached. It's not in the spirit of that accord. We had agreed that if you got into office, you will help us to realize our own political ambitions. We don't know now whether we did anything wrong by putting you in office. I mean, we can't understand you anymore, Your Excellency. Well, those men have been fired. We cannot continue to have a sort people. They have disappointed this country. Which men? We cannot continue with them. Which men? The names you submitted. The five names you submitted. Why not? What, what did they do? A special commission of inquiry found them guilty of embezzling public fund. Gentlemen, you know this. I mean, it happened 
in the previous administration. Your Excellency, since you came into office, irrespective of the fact that we spent a lot of money to put you here, <laughs> irrespective of the fact that you even pledged to do our wishes, you've turned your back completely on us. And since then, it's been so difficult for us getting along. Which was why we requested you to allow us some contracts for road reconstruction, you refused. Permit us to explore oil wells again, you refused. Now we submitted five names for you to offer ministerial appointments again, you have refused. Now, these are the only people we feel can help us redefine our economic situation. I am pleading with you, Your Excellency, reinstate them, please. They are our only hope. They have been fired and cannot be reinstated. Your Excellency, please get them reinstated, please. I'm sorry, they cannot be reinstated. Are they the only, they are not, the, they are, this is not the first time people embezzle public funds and got away scot free. Why should be a special case? My administration is different. Did you hear what he said? Yes. He said his administration is different. Uh, Your Excellency, is, is there really nothing you can do about this situation? Absolutely nothing. I'm sorry about that. Nothing. Gentlemen, we're still friends. Um, some tea. Your Excellency, we have not come here to take tea. We have come here to get contacts which you are. You have just refused us. Thank you very much for the offer, Your, Your Excellency. I don't drink tea. I don't like tea. I don't like tea. My father is a businessman. Don't tell me his name. Oh, come on, baby girl. We're not here to talk about him. Please, please, let's just change this subject, okay? That's okay. So? How about telling me about getting married again? Again? Sure. What do you mean? I wasn't married before. I was pregnant and I had her. I love her so much and okay, I am okay, not okay. ashamed of her. I'm so sorry, okay? I didn't mean to upset you, okay? It's okay. I'm sorry too. I was a little bit harsh. I can understand. She means everything to you, huh? Yeah. Everything. Well, that's how much you mean to me. You see, Cynthia, you're unique in special ways. I never felt this all my life. You make my world complete. And I... I want to walk down the aisle to say the words of my life. I do. Wait, 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 wait. Are you proposing already? You don't even know me. Besides, a guy like you should have girls tucked away somewhere. Well, you're, you're right. Actually, my parents want me to marry someone. Their friend's daughter. Everything is arranged. But I just couldn't. I told them I'm man enough to choose a woman of my choice. So, are you still searching or? found your choice. Well, looks like my search came to an end. The very day I found you. And knowing you is the most wonderful thing that ever happened in my life.
Senate President. You are welcome, Senate President. Sit down. Senate President, good evening. You are welcome, Mr. Senate President. Thank you very much. Mr. President of the Senate, we have invited you into this meeting to actually salvage or to protect our own country. The President of this country has deviated from our earlier plans. That's why you are here. We are aware of the anti-graft bill that is on your table. It must not be passed into law because the president wants to use it to disgrace us. Mr. President, the president has insulted us. Look at us. We put you there just like we put the president. I didn't know him. Atumba didn't know him. It was Alaji who recommended him to us. The man could not pay his rent for two years, but he said he had integrity. So we said, okay, let us work out an arrangement with this man whereby we make him the president and he creates the political circumstances to enable us realize our individual political ambitions. We were wrong. The moment he got into that office, he turned his back on us. Today he looks on us as political upstarts, as political failures. Nobody now remembers how he got there. Yes. Today he bestrides the entire country like a colossus. And we, look at us, petty men who must peep from under his huge legs to find ourselves dishonorable graves, disreputable graves. Look at Dokubo, who could not even feed himself. Today, when he sneezes, we catch cold. Us. We now feed from the crumbs that fall from his table. Look, 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 look at him. All right. We called you here to tell you that that situation is no longer acceptable to us and we want him impeached. That's why we called you. Welcome. Mr. Senate President, are you listening to what uh, Chief Ese has just said? That man must be disgraced out of the office. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It has to happen now, now. And you have 72 hours to do that. Only 72 hours. Senate President, you are welcome, Senate yeah. President. Sit down. Senate President, good evening. You are welcome, Mr. Senate President. Thank you very much. Mr. President of the Senate, we have invited you into this meeting to actually salvage or to protect our own country. The President of this country has deviated from our earlier plans. That's why you are here. We are aware of the anti-graft bill that is on your table. It must not be passed into law because the president wants to use it to disgrace us. Right. Mr. President, the president has insulted us. Look at us. We put you there. Just like we put the president. I didn't know him. Atumba didn't know him. It was Alaji who recommended him to us. The man could not pay his rent for two years. But he said he had integrity. So we said, okay, let us work out an arrangement with this man. Whereby we make him the president and he creates the political circumstances to enable us realize our individual political ambitions. We were wrong. 
The moment he got into that office, he turned his back on us. Today he looks on us as political upstarts, as political failures. Nobody now remembers how he got there. Yes. Today he bestrides the entire country like a colossus. And we, look at us, petty men who must peep from under his huge legs to find ourselves dishonorable graves, disreputable graves. Look at Dokubo, who could not even feed himself. Today, when he sneezes, we catch cold. Us. We now feed from the crumbs that fall from his table. Look, 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 look at him. All right. We called you here to tell you that that situation is no longer acceptable to us and we want him impeached. That's why we called you. Welcome. Mr. Senate President, are you listening to what uh, Chief Ese has just said? That man must be disgraced out of the office. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It has to happen now, now. And you have 72 hours to do that. Only 72 hours. Sir, as much as I appreciate how bad you feel over a matter of this magnitude, I'd rather crave your indulgence to allow Mr. President more time to stabilize. Sir, I know how you feel about it. It's traumatic. But again, I, I wish you will allow the president some more time. I think his problem basically is lack of time. It, it, one thing about my president is he has a listening ear. And I want to believe that if he has enough time at his disposal, he will change. No, he will definitely change. I know him for who he is. Look, uh, young man, in politics there aren't permanent friends, but permanent interests. Look, we are aware of the fact that the president did not consult the house, but went ahead and procured equipment for the production of antiretroviral drugs. You know we are aware of that. That is strong ground enough for you to start the impeachment process. That is the man you are telling us as a listening ear. How many things have they done with the Senate? Green. He doesn't consult anybody. Right? He has a listening ear. Mr. President of the Senate, we have a majority in both houses. And we require two-thirds of that majority to impeach him. We are going to be civil. No violence. We shall employ the due democratic process of impeachment. In a democratic dispensation, the minority will have their say, but the majority must have their way. We want him out. Hey, Mr. Senate President, I'm shocked too at your behavior. I'm really shocked. I don't know where you learned that the man has listening here. You understand? Maybe because you are in government now, you, you are beginning to think otherwise. But listen, that man sitting in that seat of power is no more in our interest. It is not. He has to go. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He has to go. And you have been given that responsibility by us who put you in power and put him in power. Are you following? Do not fail also. Do not fail. Are you listening, Mr. Han? Yes, Senate President. Now, with due respect, sir, I want to pledge my unalloyed loyalty, support, and commitment to a noble cause like this. Yes, loyalty. Loyalty is very important in this matter. Loyalty. Support, we can get support of uh, area boys, but loyalty is very important. Uh, aside, sir, your wish is my command. Again, I, I, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel great when I realize that 
political big wigs like you are behind me in this gigantic assignment of impeaching the president of this country. When a child decides to bite the finger and feed him, what do you do? You knock his teeth out. We have a majority in the Senate. How much will it cost us to get him out? I know that every man has got his price. How much will it cost us? We want him out. If you'll excuse me, sir, you, you, you should realize that it's an expensive, as well as an expansive project. Uh, that I will need to get back to my colleagues at both houses of the National Assembly to discuss the uh, nitty-gritty. Uh, who takes what and who does what. All that is going to require some time to effect. So that as soon as I am through with that, I will definitely come back to give you a feedback with an accurate and untainted figure. That makes good sense, Senate President. So as soon as you are able to, to, to get the estimates, please come and see us. I have bleeds for her. Oh, will you shut up? Listen to me, Stephen. Christabel is a decent girl, and you must marry her. What's so funny? Will you get out of here? You can't force that girl on me. Not even daddy can. I have made up my mind. I do not want any arranged marriage. Hey. Listen to me, Stephen. Who is talking about arranged marriage? You brought that girl into this family and told us you wanted to marry her. That was then, mommy. That was then. What do you mean that was then? Let me tell you something. You're not going to embarrass this family. Do you understand me? You're not going to disgrace us. I don't love that girl anymore. Do you mean you don't love... Oh, good evening, mommy. Good evening, mommy. Hi, Siri. Stephen? Christopher. It's very obvious now that, that it doesn't want to change. It's okay, Christopher. It's okay. Come on, let's talk. You know how he's men are. Come on. Almost I shouldn't force myself on him. You know, he's talking about forcing yourself. Just take it easy. Okay? I don't know. It looks like Stephen doesn't love me anymore. Oh, no. Christabel, don't say that. Stephen cares a great deal about you. It's just that um, he's passing through a phase. Yeah, a phase. Oh, mommy, do you think I'm pushing myself too much on him? Of course not. He will come around. Just give him time, okay? Honestly, mommy, I love him very much, you know, and I won't spend the rest of my life with him. Come on, Christabel. I'm sure Stephen feels the same way. And you're the best daughter-in-law anybody can ask of. And I love your family a great deal. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Honestly, I hope I just really hope you change his mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephen is my son. And I know how to talk to him. Okay? Okay, mommy. Um, let me hurry upstairs and spend some time with her. Okay, you do that. Alright then. See you later. Okay. Hello, Chief, it's me. It's Stephen again. Yeah, so what has Stephen done this time? He says he's not going to marry Christabel anymore. He's in love with some woman with a lot of children to look after. What? Is he out of his mind? He says he's in love with her, Chief. Listen, tell him that if he does that, I will disinherit him completely. Why don't you come home and tell him yourself? No, no, I can't do that now. I'm at a meeting. It's all right. I will tell him when I come back home. All right? It's okay. Bye bye. God, you will never change. Ross, you read yesterday, Papa. What's in there for yesterday, Papa? Ah. Say, Sinet, why you teach president? What do you do? And just because of saying he no consult them before he go buy a machine, where did he take due medicine? It's simple. The president broke the law. So he must be punished. 
Oh. What's it? You know how many souls we save? If you did the uh, inform them, this one goes and the other one goes You know how many souls we could die? My brother, this is democracy. That house where they there, no be rubber stamp. For the president go inform God, he know inform the Senate. And this thing don't break law. He must follow the due course of constitution. He has to consult them. They will approve it before he buys anything. Now he don't do what they they good with the happy. Yes. You know the next thing we will go do. The next one will be something we go scatter life. What we will go do? We don't approve for the first one. Why will we approve for the second one? So now you see they support the impeachment. I know they support any impeachment. If he save life, yes, the mass is like what he did. So what I want make him do now he will feed do. I make him just go apologize to the house. You should say you apologize. I never apologize. Ah, uh, you apologize now. At least he's not a retired general. Mr. Senate President, you have failed us. What are you going to say? Well, I, I can't understand this. We gave you all the money you demanded to obtain a two-thirds majority in the House of Reps and the Senate and impeach the President. You failed. You're sitting down there. In spite of all the promises you made us. So what, what do you want us to tell you? Well, honorable gentlemen, I am sorry that the president's policy suddenly became very popular. It found its ways into the good books of uh, honorable members. And this made things very difficult. I couldn't really turn them around. Wait. Five. Mr. President, President, do yourself a favor. Please just shut up. Whose policy suddenly became popular? This president. Wait, are you talking about this president or another president? This president's policy suddenly became very popular. Which policy are you talking about? Look, in one sentence, you have disappointed us. That's all. You don't have anything to say. Mr. Senate President. We well, thank you very much for your efforts. Please, can you leave now? Well, I'm indeed very sorry for not being able to achieve the assignment I was given. But please, when next something... Please, 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 it's okay, Mr. Senate President. You can go. If anything comes up, we will let you. We will let you. Just listen to him. If anything crops up, does. Because just insult our intelligence like that. We gave an assignment, you failed. If anything just crops up. Look, the president has got to go. Period. Period. Yes. What about our plan B? Yes. Let's put it to work immediately. You know? Yes. We get. Retired General H. E. Ocon. He has already been briefed. So we call upon him and he will get the person who will execute our plan. Look, why don't you contact him immediately? I will send for him and arrange for a meeting tonight. Beautiful. Out there, I know she's hearing 
always there to give a tender word. Can you hear the words softly drifting from the sound? There's something behind the blue button. Go get it. Something written on all this. Let's so find out. <laughs> Let's see that. Oh. <clears throat> Can I untie it? Sure. Nice. I hope it looks beautiful. to be everything to everyone but I would love to be something to someone this, is this is this the reason for all this do this. Sorry, Steven. Sorry. Excuse me. I have listened to you and I must say that our relationship has been very good in the past and that is why I will accept this offer. Um, thank you very much, gentlemen. I am happy you have decided to take the offer. Um, do you have the boys that will assist you in Executing this assignment. 
My days in the service, I have trained a good number of boys. There is this one I am going to use. The best of all of them. Just one man. What? What? <laughs> General, did I hear you right? You said just one man. You mean one man can be able to handle all this action alone? Just one man. Uh -uh. General, please. What we are asking for is a coup. So, no. A coup. It's not a one man show. It can never be a one man show. How can that man be able to remove the president? When the whole Senate and House of Representatives have not been able to do it for as long as they've been there. General, please, what we require is an outright coup. If I get you right, the purpose of this assignment is to eliminate the president. Am I correct? Yes. Am I correct? Yes. So, so the best thing is assassination. And I am going to give you the best man to do this job. He is enormously qualified. First, he was sucked out of the army on a very flimsy excuse like myself. I have trained some of the best marksmen in this country. Yet I was retired as a major general with some other officers. I wonder what the government wants to do with them. Yet they are still very, very active men. This man I am talking about has been trained to kill as a sniper. And you have such confidence in him? Yes, I have. Dear, please, what are his uh, credentials? A man was trained in both a basic and advanced sniping course in Australia. Jungle masters in Cuba. Seamanship in Japan. And the ballistics in Russia. And so on and so forth. He has had a four duty trips in Europe. And was very, very successful. His qualifications are DSM. MCB, MBE, and the most important one, SMS. He is a survivor. Uh, General, no doubt the person you're referring to is the man that we want, uh, especially with all these uh, credentials. But what, what do they really stand for? DMGS, DE, MBE, SMS, it's... What, what do they stand for? Most especially that SMS, the last word. <laughs> the SMS is Suicide Mission Survivor. General, I think you have just finished describing a perfect killing machine. How? Can we get in touch with this person? I can always reach him when I want to. He left the shores of this country immediately. He was sacked from the army. Well, gentlemen, we have all, all heard from the general. And uh, going by all the details he has at his disposal, he certainly can handle this all alone. So we shall give all the arrangements to him. General, at any stage in your preparation, if you feel that you require some assistance from us, don't hesitate to notify us. Well, gentlemen, you will be very happy to retire. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm Mr. Ajay. Thank you for coming up now. Oh, a white Camry, no problem. Okay. Oh, I won't fail you, I promise. I won't. Thank you very much. Bye.
Yes, can I help you? Can you please give me a ride? Hello. Thank you. Hello. 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 I don't like people smoking in my car. I told you before, you finally did the secret. <laughs> you look cute. What's your name? Abraham. Hmm? What's yours? Brenda. Nice name, you guys. <laughs> so, where, so where are you going to? I'm just going down to the supermarket. What do you buy in the supermarket at this time of the evening? I could take you out for dinner if you wanted to. I was just thinking I'm going to have something nice. Sounds nice. So where are we going to? Somewhere nice. I know a very nice place. You will like it. My friend, stop. Let me come down. What's your problem? Oh, yeah, I saw this motor now. What's your problem? Stop. Okay. Ah, what's your problem? I beg. Oh, yeah, stop. But I'll get another degree stop if we hear. So, what nonsense?
What's up? You sent me a red signal, sir. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You are still one of my boys. We have spoken a lot in the past. Correct? Correct, sir. Are you still loyal to me and your country? Sir, I still serve in the army and I control the presidential security system, sir. That is good. So you are still patriotic? And what about your loyalty to me? Sir, I am still loyal to you. Even though you're retired, a general is always a general, sir. <laughs> I have a responsibility to helping this country and getting at the government that retired me and some of your colleagues and mine. This patriotic zeal I cannot ignore. I need you on board this ship with me. Sir, can I get you very clear here, sir? In the past, so brilliant officers have been sacked, retired, court martialed, and disgraced out of service. Most of them are roaming the streets, having nothing to do. These men are still young and active, but have become irrelevant. We cannot afford to let this continue. Colonel, Sir. we need you. We need you for logistics and hardware. We need you to create loopholes in the presidential security for the sniper. But, sir. I work in the presidency. I am still very active in service. That is why we need you. So do I know this man? No. But he was one of my students. The best sniper I have ever seen. He was one of those court martialed and retired from the army. He has been away abroad I contacted him and he is now in town. What kind of guns do you require, sir? He will let you know when he comes. Are you in? Yes, sir. Anything for the general, sir.
How was the trip? Uneventful, sir. You will be contacted. Outside in front of the church is a Honda Accord right hand drive packed out there. In this envelope, you will find your contract for the release of your weapon. I want you to know that this is a lifetime operation. I wish you good luck. It's just to reach that's all I know about. You know, he has helped I and my daughter a lot. He even bought her a wheelchair. Do you really love him? If you do, then marry him. Um, no, 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 father. I, I can't marry him. I don't even know his family. I have to meet with him first. You know, I don't want to make a serious surprise in my life. You see, no. It's like the flower, and if you want the flower to survive, flower, yes, yes, money, and evening. Jag, I am talking to you. How did you get in here? Jag, I ask you again. How did you get in here? you from the church. You followed me from the church? The church where I was calling you? You snubbed me? Now you break into my house? Oh my God. John, you left me 
pregnant. After so many years, you break into my house just like that. Do you think you can walk in and out of my life at your own free will? Jang, you abandoned me. I did not know you were pregnant. You did not know I was pregnant. Interesting. wasn't you. But then I was calling you, but you wouldn't even talk to me. You snubbed me. I mean, why, why did you do that? Then why? Hello, Touch. My name is not Touch. My name is Touchy. Sweetheart, that's, that's your daddy. Hello, Touchy. Are you with my daddy? To show him my present. Oh, Doesn't he like me? Is it because I cannot walk? I thought you just told me right now that he's my dad. Baby, he likes you. Then if he likes me, why did he leave? Come on, probably he went to buy something for you. For me, I don't hear that again. If he loves me and he wants to go and get something for me, why didn't he tell me? Before going, does he know he can surprise me? I, I can just do anything bad to myself. Why? Sorry about that, sweetheart. He'll be back soon, okay? I hope so. He will. Now smile for me, baby. That's my girl. My daddy came. She's been expecting him all this year. Oh, Cynthia. Don't start again, please. You know how much I love you and Tochi. Yeah, I know that. Don't worry. She'll have a nice time, whether you see or not, okay? Steven, thank you very much. Thank you. Wait a minute. Did you say her father came here? Oh, yeah. He did. What about? How did he find you here? Um, I saw him at the church and he followed me here. Oh, I see. And what does he want? What? He's 
daughter is here, remember? Maybe he came for the both of you. I wouldn't know. You still love him, don't you? gestures towards I and Tochi. I appreciate everything. You're such a nice and wonderful person. Cynthia, I'll see you, okay? You don't have to go. Are you alright? 